What's up guys, John Bird III here and we're back again for another video. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the juice. We're gonna talk about that gold thing, that all new Custom Pro. But before we jump into today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, also make sure you hit that notification bell because we're gonna be changing when we actually post these new videos. Lately, we've been doing Saturday evenings and before that, we've been doing Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. But moving forward, we're going to change the date. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when a new video is coming out. But without no further ado, we're going to jump into talking about the Custom Pro. So backstory, the original Custom Pro with this one right here. This is actually Shaw Gritsby's old reel. And this reel right here, if you look at the frame of this reel, this is the same frame that's on the Hyperspeed, the Tournament MP the Tournament Pro, the KVD reel, the Gen 2 $99 speed spool, that's the same frame as this reel. This reel was an awesome reel to fish with. One thing in particular about this reel that is different from the others, and we're gonna talk about the differences as you go into the different generations. One thing that stood out or that was different from this generation here was the braking system. So this had the ACB braking system. And as you see in there, it actually only has four pins. So the braking was decent. Y'all know I love the ACB braking system because of the simplicity. You adjust your gas pedal, you adjust your brake pedal, that's it, you go on fishing. And so y'all know I like the frame, the frame feels good in my hand, and these reels are just great to overall fish with. So then Luz released the Gen 2 model, this one right here. Man, this reel right here is my favorite reel to date. Like, I love fishing with the Gen 2. And what set it apart compared to all the other reels that was in the lose lineup is the braking system. And this has the ACB braking system also. So you're probably thinking like, why is this braking system different from the other one? And if it's supposed to be the brake ACB, well, this one actually has six pins on the inside. So the six pins on this inside actually made this reel, the braking a lot better, right? So you always wanna to try to figure out what makes the next generation better than the other one. So the first thing, eye, what, what catches your eye about the reel? It's the frame. Completely different frame from the Gen 1. Totally different frame. So the Gen 2 actually had a smaller, more compact frame. It feels really good in the hand. And the thing I liked about this the most, I fish a Texas rig with this setup. Now, I like Texas rig. I guess you call it like a finesse Texas rig. So 3 16 ounce weight, a Strike King finesse worm, the six and a half inch, or the Fat Baby finesse worm, 17 pound line, four out hook, peg it of course, and I can bomb cast it and I won't backlash with it. I can put, I can cast in some tight spots and really get my bait where I need it to be. And it's really just a fun reel to fish with. Backlashes are minimum and it's just feels very good at hand. It's just like anything else. You always wanna find that thing that feels good to you, whether it feel good in hand, whether it's a new pair of shoes that feel good on your feet, Whatever, that's why I love this reel, man. This reel right here is the juice. But when the Gen 3 came out, big difference, and I can instantly tell that, okay, this reel right here is gonna be a step up from Gen 1 and Gen 2 combined. And we're gonna talk about why. So the first thing you notice about this reel is the gold. Man, this reel just really, really sticks out. And the thing I like about this reel, I actually, it, it took a while for the color to kind of grow me because it's like, man, this color is kind of gaudy looking. But when you talk about why they did it, it starts to make sense. So Luz wanted this reel to stand out amongst its peers. And I'm going to tell you why. And first thing, aside from the gold, it has a very compact frame and it's smaller actually than the other two. The Gen 3 model has a smaller spool compared to Gen 1 and Gen 2. So it has a smaller spool and a more compact frame. But the biggest thing that sets this reel apart from Gen 1 and Gen 2 is the braking system. Check out this clip.
So in the clip, you notice about this gold ring in here. And the gold ring, actually, it goes in and out, in and out. And in your traditional braking systems, you're normally your brake pads or the magnetic brakes in here, they're normally facing a wall like this. Well, in the video, you've seen that the brakes were facing actually up. And so what that does is it allows the reel to be able to have full contact with the brakes. So it allows the spool to have full contact with the brakes because the brakes are facing up, the spool, the little gold ring, it's coming in and out like this, and you're constantly getting full contact and full brakes of the reel whenever you're making a long cast to help prevent backlashes. So the thing about this particular braking system is like when we tested this reel, we used a KVD 1.5 flat, which is a hard bait to throw in general, but it's also hard to throw in the wind. And once we dialed this reel in to throw the KVD 1.5 flat, backlashes were minimal. And so as you heard me talk about in Gen 2, like I had very little backlashes with my light Texas rig set up. And that's with a lot of different reels. But once you dial that reel in, I dialed that sucker in, backlashes was minimum very long bomb cast, great reel to fish with. But a bait that is harder to throw is the reel test, and that's why we tested the KVD 1.5 flat. Now, you hear a lot of reel companies out there, and you hear a lot of pros when they're talking about the reels. You hear them say, oh man, I don't have no backlashes, da 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 da. Yeah, but you're talking about casting with a half ounce jig, something that got some weight. Let's hear about the reels that when you tested them, you tested them with a light bait that's hard to throw like a KVD 1.5 flat. And that is the part there that sets this reel apart from any other reel in a loose lineup and any other reel out there on the market. So a lot of people, and I've been reading comments about that gold ring. And they said that there's a competitor out there, a loose competitor out there that has that same gold ring, which is true. But the difference is, and you don't hear nobody talking about this, the difference between that reel and this reel right here is, of course, for the first thing that you notice by eye, if you look at the two gold rings, that ring is smaller, right? But also, the brakes are only positioned on part of the spool, whereas on this reel, the brakes are evenly distributed around the entire spool of the reel, so that when you're making a cast, you're getting very, very good control of your spool and your spool is adjusting to the bait or whatever the wind is blowing at or whatever the wind catches, the spool is adjusting to it. So with any reel, it's important to learn how to dial your reel in. And when you dial this sucker in, I'm telling you, this reel right here, I don't like the word game changer, so I'm not even gonna use it. This reel is on a totally different level. So. These will be dropping later this fall, so make sure you keep your eyes out for this reel. When these things drop, I'm actually gonna order another two or three, specifically for cranking. So this reel, that's one thing I like about this reel, it comes in three gear ratio. So you got a 6.8, a 7.5, and an 8.3. This one right here is a 7.5. This is a do-all reel for me just because of the gear ratio. But I think I'm gonna use this reel for flipping because it's small, lightweight, compact, and again, 7.5 to 1, great all-around gear ratio. But I'm also going to order two in the 6.8 gear ratio. And I'm going to use those for cranking, as I said. So, and specific cranking that I'm going to use it for. So anything like a chick magnet, the new Strike King Hardliner, 1.5, stuff like that, that's going to be for one of them. And then the other 6.8 it's gonna be for my mid diving. So we're talking about my gravel dogs. We're talking about maybe my 3XDs, Series 4s, any crankbait in that mid diving depth. So let's say, let's just say six to 10 foot, maybe a little bit in that 12. That is what the other reel is gonna be geared towards. So I'm gonna use this one for my flipping because it's just lightweight compact and I enjoy using it for that. And I'm gonna use the other two just for cranking. But I also have two Gen 2s that I'm gonna to continue to use also. One is gonna be for just throwing like a, my light texture rig. Y'all know I love to still continue to do that. So I'm gonna do that. And then the other one, I don't, I'm not really sure. I have to go back and look. At, funny part is, on my computer, I actually have an Excel spreadsheet and it's color coded. And I have each rod that I have in my lineup is matched with a reel for the technique. And so that's how my videos come about because I'm always like to have my stuff dialed to the max. 
So this reel right here is gonna be fun to fish with. Now, it also competes against those reels that make that loud noise like a rooster crowing in the morning anytime you make a long cast. And so any type of digitally controlled reels, you don't have to charge this reel or anything like that, that's what this reel is gonna compete against. And I'm willing to put some money up against that because I actually have one of those reels somewhere down there that my mom gave me and or she bought me a couple years ago and we tested the original version of this to that casting the 1.5 flat and it's still bomb cast further than that and i didn't have no backlashes so keep that in mind but this is a reel you definitely going to want to have in your arsenal coming up once they release in the next few weeks so you definitely going to want to stay tuned Keep an eye out for on the lose page, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. Keep an eye out for when they come out. You can already make pre-orders right now at TackleWarehouse.com. So if you want to go ahead and pre-order one, go ahead and do that at TackleWarehouse.com. That way you already got your secure. So the moment they hit stop, bam, they're going to be shipped right to you. And you ain't going to have nothing to worry about. You're just waiting on the mailman to come drop that sucker off. But it's going to be a real worth having. I enjoy fishing mine. I don't have mine probably since probably right before I cast. So I'd have had mine a couple months. I've used it for skipping a jig. I've flipped with it and I love it. Like I really do enjoy fishing with it, but I'm not saying that because it's the new reel on the market and the braking system and all that. I'm not saying that because of that. I'm saying that simply because of this bad boy right here, the Gen 2. I love the Gen 2. If I've had people ask me before, if I had to pick one lose reel to have an entire arsenal with, what reel would that be? I said, I gave them two options. I said, if I'm on a budget, I'm going $99 speed spool. You can't beat that reel. It's bulletproof. You can throw it in Afghanistan. Let tanks run over it. Set off mine bombs. Pick it back up. Put some 20 pound line on there. Go flipping. 50 pound braid on there. Go frogging. 12 pound line. Go cranking. That reel is bulletproof. But if I said, if I don't have no budget, and budget is not an option, I'm going with the Gen 2 Custom Pro. I always said that this reel is a dream to fish with. So I was a fan of the Custom Pro before the Gen 3 even came out. And when I was able to test the Gen 3 last year back in, I wanna say it was like October, November, I was already blown away. Just instantly the moment I tied that 1.5 flat on and made that bomb cast, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna add more of these. So the Gen 3, and guess what? You got to upgrade from Gen 2 to Gen 3, a big upgrade as far as braking system, the changing of the spool, changing of the frame. The price did not change. So this reel right here would be $279.99. To some guys, $279 is going to be a high price point reel, right? To some guys, it's going to be like, oh, that's not price too bad. So in my opinion, a, your, your mid-tier reels, I will say your mid-tier, your, your weekend warrior anglers, your anglers that are going to be using their stuff a lot, that's a great bang for your buck reel right there. So mid-tier, my price point range where I'm saying that is somewhere between, let's say, 150 to 300 Like, there are a lot of reels in that range. So when you get into your 150 your 200 so 150 you can get the KVD or you can get the tournament MP somewhere around there. 200 you go to tournament pro. And then from the tournament pro, you jump to the custom pro. So, and then from there, if you wanna make a bigger jump, you go into the hyper mag, which is 350. So that 279 right there is a great price in my opinion. It's not a real where you're just gonna go out and you're just gonna ball out and buy a bunch of them at one time. But like the $99 speed food, you go buy you a couple of them. But the dish reel right here, it's like, it's an experience. I've, I, I've always said before, and I haven't talked about this in, on any other video on my channel. There was a time where I used reels so right about somewhere in that hundred to two hundred dollar range, and I said, "I wonder what a high end reel feels like, and is it really worth the money?" Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, no. When you talk about the nine nine dollar speed spool, and comparing that to other high end reels, is it worth making the jump from the nine nine dollar speed spool to the high end reels? It depends. When you're talking about braking systems, yes. When you're talking about weight like cutting the weight out of reels and it's lightweight in your hand yes 
Then once you start, once you get out of that, when you talk about the weight and the braking systems, at that point, it's like, I don't really care about ball bearings. I'm not a ball bearing guy. Drag, it depends. I did a test with one of my buddies. I think I talked about this in another video that five pounds of drag is, is a lot. And you don't realize how much five pounds of drag actually really is until you actually have a, like, it's like a scale that you can test the drag. That's a lot. And the, the actual fight behind that is unreal. So I always look at the weight of the reel. I like to check out the frame in my hand. And I always want to also check out, again, like the brake system. Am I gonna have internal pins I'm gonna have to mess with or whatever? But anyway, the Custom Pro, if you're wondering if you really should get it, go check out Todd Castledine's videos. He talks about it, how he's been able to have minimal backlashes once he set the reel up based on the technique. Scott Martin has a video out there on Instagram where he's making a long cast with it, doesn't backlash with it. There are already videos out there of people using this reel and it works. It's not a gimmick. I'm telling you, I've been a fan of the Gen 2. I got two of them right here. I got one right here. I got another one right there. I've been a fan of the Gen 2 and the Custom Pro has always been my favorite reel. It's probably, in my opinion, it has always been the best reel in the entire Lose lineup. But when Gen 3 came out, it's like, next level so check them out that's it for today's video make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that like button hit that notification bell we're going to be doing a lot more content with the rods the reels we're going to be continuing to do reviews on stuff and finding that right setup for the specific technique i'm jb3 i got to get back to living the dream i'll catch you later